The decision of how much of our income to save for the future or spend a day is an example of an intertemporal choice. Personal savings were about 7 to 11 percent of personal income for most of the years from the late 1950s up to the early 1990s. Since then, the rate of personal savings has fallen substantially, although it seems to have bounced back a bit in 2008. The choice to save versus consume is based on future expectations, which is where we get the term intertemporal. The savings versus consumption decision can be analyzed using an intertemporal budget constraint, like the one pictured here. John will make a choice between present and future consumption. With an annual rate of return of 6%, he decides that his utility will be highest at point B, which represents a choice of $800,000 in present consumption and $1,148,000 in future consumption. When the annual rate of return, or the price of money, rises to 9%, the intertemporal budget constraint pivots up. John could choose to take the gains from his higher rate of return in several forms. More present saving and much higher future consumption, J. The same present saving and higher future consumption, K. More present consumption and more future consumption, L or more present consumption and the same future consumption, M. So why do people increase their consumption of higher education and training during an economic downturn, when most other products and services are consumed at a lower rate? We see in this graph that this choice can pay off in the future. Those with the highest degrees in 2012 had substantially lower unemployment rates, whereas those with the least formal education suffered from the highest unemployment rates. The national median weekly, uh, the national median average weekly income was $815, and the national unemployment average in 2012 was 6.8%. Making a good choice economically is often seen as a rational decision, but as behavioral economics proves, that people do not always choose rationally.